Hi everybody, welcome to Beyond the Lines. My name is Sarah, I'm the artist behind Pinsel Geschichten and today I'm working in the Outlander coloring book again. And I'm starting this particular page here uh, with watercolor pencils and uh, I'm going to talk to you about how I choose colors for the background, um, what I want to put in there and what part from the beginning I plan to pop. On this page so join me so let's start the story for today's painting is uh, more of the outlander um, I was quite sure I was still hallucinating when the sound of shots was followed by appear the appearance of five or six men dressed in red coats and knee breeches waving muskets I blinked and stared I moved my hand before my face and held up two fingers I saw two fingers, all present and correct. No blurring of vision. I sniffed the air cautiously. The pungent odor of trees in spring and the faint whiff of clover from the clump near my feet. No olfactory delusions. So, let's uh, put away the paintings that I did earlier. Um... This year, I think I started this year, or did I start last year? I don't remember. Last year, I think. Whatever. Um, Today, it's this one here. Uh, I already have my um, cardstock behind the painting. And I do have my watercolor pencils next to me. Um, this is the swatch of the colors that I can work with. And they are the Faber-Castell Albrecht Dürer pencils. They are exactly the same shades as the Polychromos, which is of course why I did choose the Albrecht Dürer's because I, I want to have a watercolor relook, but still I want to be able to go in with the exact same shade with the colored pencils later and maybe uh, have a bit more let's say brilliance and oomph in the painting. Now we, of course we're gonna have red coats here so that's all gonna be a warm red. Um, uh, I want to have a bit of a gray here on the on the bottom for that road also a bit of uh, like ochre color so dirt pretty much then we have the trees we are in spring so they are a bit more juicy green light green also with the grass that's kind of looking through here and uh, i do have a couple of clouds and a sky so that would be a bluish tint a grayish bluish tint and the horses um i would go with the usual brown maybe a bit of a light brown warm brown cold brown whatever um but uh, I want to start with the background, actually. Why that is? Uh, because I can then way easier define how much do I have to put on top to make them be the foreground in comparison to the trees and stuff back here. It's way more difficult for me the other way around. So I'm going to start with the tree trunks. I want two shades of brown for that because I don't want them to all look the same. I want the 280. And you don't have to remember all of the pencils because I'm going to have them written down at my block when uh, the final video for this one airs. I'm not sure if I can do it all in one sitting. I only have two hours. Uh, I don't want to bore you any longer. And I want to keep it real time. So I'm thinking this is maybe two or three parts, depending on how fast I can work. So I want the burnt umber for one. And then a maybe a bit of a lighter tone two so the 178 um and a bit of a yellowish one the 179 is a nice color so that would be raw umber nougat and burnt umber the burnt umber is going to be my shading color for all of the trees so i'm pretty much just going in 
I decide what color I want what to be. So I want this one here to be the uh, raw umber. And I don't have to have my pencils at a point uh, sharpened to a really bad, uh, pristine point. I don't have to have that because I'm, I don't want the marks on my page for one. I'm also going in with a super light hand. Also, I uh, am going to... Um, going to liquefy the pigment anyway so why would I need a super sharp tip there's no there's no need there as long as I can get into the twigs here the branches I'm good and uh, like that I don't waste any supply um, taking the other color the nougat color for the tree in front here Not going over it solid, but close enough. Um, I don't mind leaving a bit of white space like around the musket, around the head. Uh, I can pull the pigment. I don't need to have everything covered there. And... Uh, that actually also gives me a bit of a contrast there. When I pull the pigment, I have a bit of a lighter, um, lighter thing going on. Like here, I'm leaving quite a bit of white space here. There's darker parts behind it. can actually already go in with the shading color not to forget later and the nice thing about those coloring books uh, is that very often the artist that uh, provided you with the with the um, with the line work already tells you where they, th they think you should shade. So there's going to be lines or squiggles or something. So just use those to determine where you want to put shading. Oh, forgot some up here. This is maybe a bit of a slower process. Any any pencil, of course, is a slower process. Um, though I have to say the watercolor pencils are way quicker than the uh, colored pencils because I can, well, only put down a little bit of pigment, kind of like the first layer of the normal pencil, the colored pencil, and then... Uh, pretty much already uh, smudge it with the water and have everything filled in. So it's kind of like if you if you work with um, paint thinner, it, it, the <laughs> the um, watercolor pencils work like if you put down colored pencil in one layer and then go over it with um, paint thinner. And then you already have like a perfect coverage, which is not going to be the case in with um, colored pencils. Let me tell you that you have to put down at least um, five. five I'd say, oh, you, of course, you have to throw the pencil. That's that's how the pros do it. Oh, gosh. There we go. Sorry about that. <laughs> um where was I? Oh, yeah. Um, it's it's more like at least uh, the 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 bare minimum is three, but I'd say more like five or seven layers before you put in the paint thinner. 
So that's why I say watercolor pencils are faster. However, um, putting down that pigment is just as slow as colored pencils is. It's not any faster. But that's fun. I mean, these these books are made for you to enjoy coloring and for you to take some time and relax and not to stress about it. Um, however, all the things that I show you here do apply just as much to any other painting or drawing as they do to coloring books. So I'm... I'm uh, just making you aware that if you're not coloring and uh, are prepared to put in, I don't know, 20, 30 hours per piece and totally find it relaxing because you may be watching a TV show with it or something, um, but you're working on other drawings or paintings, it's the same thing. You uh, the, the supply do not get any faster. Just, yeah, they, they might even get a bit slower because you might think of stuff to put into your drawing or painting um, on the fly if you're not planning out everything. Uh, like, or, or just have a raw idea of what you want to do before you actually start drawing, painting, whatever it is that you do. All right, oh, the tree is done. Let's take the other trees back here. Just give them a bit of brown here on the branches. Not gonna put in color solidly on the trunks here too. I can pull the pigment and again that already gives me a bit of light and dark. Um, need to put in a little bit of the, um, the dark brown here. Also here, and here just a bit. It just uh, makes for uh, the tree looking round actually, in the end. All right. That was the vlogging camera because I needed a bit of footage for coloring. Uh, for my weekly vlog. Maybe you have seen it already before this video here comes out. So I'm pretty much going all around the page and see okay where's trees or bushes, uh, twigs, where's something that is dark brown. And I'm gonna give them different brown uh, color there. Just to mix things up a bit. There's nothing, so it's just this one here. And I'm going in with the uh, lighter brown again. And I'm going to uh, fix this brown pigment with water. Fixing meaning um, me not being able to smudge over things anymore. Uh, not meaning that I could not move the pigment anymore. So I'm going to have some uh, water 
on this brown pigment here before I move on to the leaves and stuff. Okay, a little bit more of the dark brown here. Because I don't want to smudge things. I'm a big smudger when it comes to um, pigments. So I'm having two water brushes here. One with the big tip. Uh, that actually... And one with a thin tip and I'm gonna take the thin tip to one. Uh, they do have a barrel with water in the back so I don't need to have um, a water glass and stuff here and I can just go on now and go over the uh, tree trunks here and liquefy my pigment to make sure that I have my card stuck behind it otherwise I might wet paper underneath that I don't want to wet. Um, just going about it like I do. <laughs> Uh, I'm going in for all the light trees first up here and then I'm going to liquefy the pigment of the big whopper here in the middle. Uh, I could go to the big whopper, <laughs> I like to call him, uh, and then go with the tiny ones here but I'm kind of lazy and I don't want to clean up my brush now which I would have to do because this is a different kind of brown. Now I don't want to pull that yellowish brown into the nougat tree. I'm going to keep them kind of separate so that I can have some um, contrast there. So you can see here there's quite a bit of the light parts here on the left hand side. I might zoom you in at just a smidge. Hold on. So that you can see a bit better maybe. Um, so there's a uh, it's lighter the tree trunk is lighter here and darker here and that is um, easily done because I'm having white space on the tree trunk and I'm just pulling the pigment to the right and then let it feather out to the left so that makes it light and dark and this is what I meant earlier when I said uh, that this would help curving the tree it's not as flat you know Okay, now for the big whopper in the middle. Careful not to pull the pigment into the soldier because I don't want that. And that's why I'm actually using the small brush on this big tree here. I could use the bigger brush, definitely. There's enough space there for me to move but I want to make sure that I'm not getting any brown pigment from the tree onto the soldier because I cannot put uh, I cannot pull away too much pigment here the paper is not watercolor paper so I cannot be super rough on it have to be careful only have to have so much water that I'm using and stuff um, and when I put pigment where I don't want to have it, it sometimes is a bit tricky to remove the pigment again. It's uh, sometimes even tricky on watercolor paper, but it's way more doable there than it is, say, here. Again, I'm pulling in the pigment into the white space, but only so much. So there's a light part here. 
So I'm just making sure that I don't smudge anything where I don't want it to go. And that's kind of easier with a smaller brush because you're limited on how much you can move the pigment. With the more water supply on the bigger brush, I could move that pigment that I put down here way further and then I would run the risk of pulling it into the solder or something where I don't want it to go. Okay. Again, you saw here having the dark behind this branch and having the light to the left hand side makes this look way rounder. Okay. I'm also making sure that I have mostly ovals that I move my brush in so that I don't have any weird lines in the background. Only if I want lines, I make sure that I move my brush in a line rather than in ovals or circles. Ovals or circles make things way smoother. And again, since I'm working on the background, I want things smooth. I don't want too much texture because this is not the focal point focal point are the soldiers. They are going to have way heavier contrast, way heavier shading. But not the trees. Okay, that's that part. Uh, let's go to the little, little twigs and branches down here. And one more. And then I can move on to these trees up here. And it's very important uh, to be comfortable with your wrist and everything. Believe me, you're, if you're coloring, drawing, painting, whatever it is that you're doing, you're probably going to sit, um, well, probably longer than 20 minutes. And I'd say that is the time where things get um, important that are the chair, the table hide, 
uh, angle and the way you hold your hand. Have it as comfortable as possible for you. Because uh, if you have pain in the end, you probably will hesitate later to get back to that activity. Um, if you make sure that you don't hurt your wrist or you have a comfortable chair and nice table height, uh, you're probably going to sit there way longer and paint, draw or color. Just saying, it's, it's, uh, it's what I learned <laughs> in a couple of years of doing that. So let me have a quick sip of tea. Quite fitting for the British Isles here. I'm having an Earl Grey today. So uh, let me think. The next thing that I want to do is the sky. Um, I like to work top to bottom and right to left because that is the way I smudge things the least. Um, I'm gonna get back to that yellowish brown tone for the dirt down here. Um, I was thinking for a hot second if I wanna do the road first, just because I had the same color. But I think I wanna go with the sky and I want a blue gray. A very, very light blue and gray, so the 146 looks good. Uh, called what's it called? Is it sky blue? Of course. <laughs> and I need a gray. I need a bit of a gray too. A cold gray. So these are the warm grays, and then we uh, the 230 is the first cold gray. Mm, I think I want. The 232. It's actually kind of like my go-to gray. It's my favorite uh, tone of cold gray. It's just the cold gray is all the same, but it's just how intense is the black and how intense is the white, pretty much. Well, it's not black and white, it's actually brown and blue, but whatever. I've told you so many times in all those videos how you can mix a wonderful blue, gray with uh, brown and blue and uh, how you can achieve a warm gray and a cold gray with exactly that. So I'm going in with just a mixture of gray and blue here. I'm gonna leave the clouds for now. I'm going to take care of them in a minute. For now, I'm just going in with uh, the blue-gray mixture. Pretty much solid. Not too much pigment, though I'm having the lightest hand ever. Underneath the clouds here, I'm a bit heavier with the way I put down my color. And I'm being super light towards the rest of the sky. I really just want a little bit of a tint there. I don't want to have it solid blue or something. I'm also going to be a little bit heavier with the gray underneath the clouds. It's kind of like, it's not a shadow, but it is helping with the contrast there. To 
find all of these little bits where there is sky. Sky in between here. I just don't know. I, I don't want to have it look too cartoony or children's book illustration-y. So that is why I'm putting in quite a bit of gray. Uh, not only the sky blue. I think it looks way more natural to have uh, more than one blue or a blue and a gray in a sky, especially in Scotland. Where, um, let's say we don't have the Caribbean kind of skies, you know. If you're unsure what the sky looks like in a particular reason, I would always suggest to uh, look for images on the web. You don't have to copy them, so you can even look at licensed photos or royalty, not royalty free, but royalty kind of photos. You're just looking, you're just getting an idea on on uh, what the sky looks like in a certain area of the world. So I think it's totally fine to use those photos. It's mm, a different kind of story when you use them as a reference. I would always go for royalty-free photos there. There's actually sites on the web that like paint my photo where you can easily take any photo that is on that page as a reference because the photographers there do put up their work with the intent that painters are going to paint them. Okay, putting in some more gray also here in the upper part of the cloud. Just a bit, especially here in the corner. And remember, I'm having the lightest touch here, not putting down any pressure. I just want a bit of gray in there. I'm going to put a little more blue down here. Not up here, because I think the sun is sitting somewhere here. So, oh, somewhere here. And uh, that's why I'm leaving that spot a bit lighter. So now I'm going in again with my little brush. And oop, I just see that I forgot to shade underneath the cloud here and also here. Okay, now. Now I can go in and liquefy that pigment. I have to be a bit careful not to pull in too much of the brown from the tree, just like here. Because <coughs> it is watercolor and it still wants to go everywhere. To be a bit more careful just to liquefy the blue, not and, uh, and the gray, not the brown. And I can always dip my um, brush onto my paper towel whenever I have a section done, just to be sure that I have my brush clean. And you can hardly see the blue, and that's fine. I really just want a very subtle bit of a blue there. I 
And again, by going in ovals or in circles, you make sure that you don't see the lines of your pencils. It's just a way smoother look. And by the way, if you want me to use a certain medium on a certain page in either, well, this book or the um, Magical Cities book by Lizzie Marie Collin, you have to let me know and I will, well, make that a priority. You have to know, though, I'm working a few weeks ahead. So... Um, uh, when this airs, this video here, I'm going to have a couple of videos uh, already recorded. For example, the one um, page, or the two pages, I should say, the two pages that I would do after that. So um, the Lizzie Marie Collin book, I would have done that already, have that filmed. And I would also have the second page in this Outlander book filmed. Uh, and maybe even work on the next color already. But uh, I ha would not have filmed the next round of paintings in this book already. So when you see that, when this video comes out and you already know what you want me to do on this page here, if you want markers, acrylics, colored pencils if there's anything in particular that you would like uh, let me know in the comment section below and I will make sure that I uh, see how I can fit that in there like go with what you want to know what you want to see Instead of what I think what might be something that I haven't done in a while. Because I always like to... Ooh, there's a bit of brown. Nope, nope, nope. Because I always like to be inspired by things that you want to see. And not just... Um, well, not just have me show you things all the time that come from my head only but things that are inspired by your needs and your head and your well your thoughts i'm thinking though hold on i have to check something what is this ah that's the hat okay so the cloud goes something like this so i think there's going to be a bit of blue or gray down here so i'm just going to have a bit of blue here and also here and of course also a bit of gray just to mute things a bit okay put them in liquify there we go uh, now I could actually go in and shade the clouds a bit. Uh, I'm going in with the same gray and I'm just following those lines here. And uh, add some light gray there. Just a smidge. 
again the background is kind of like well being a background it's not what i want the focus on but still it should be it should be uh, cohesive and nice and well shaded but maybe a bit more with the subtle tones instead of the uh, super light, super dark, high contrast tones. But still it should it should be shaded well because I'm gonna shade those um, soldiers here really well and it would be maybe too much of a difference there if I wouldn't do any shading at all here on these clouds would have no detail in there it would be kind of weird actually so i'm putting in some uh shadow or some color there but still subtle enough that uh it stays the background you know okay going in with my brush again See, it's very little that you can see it, but you can see it. I mean, it's there. And I could always go darker if I so desire, if I want some more dark. But I actually don't. I think it's a nice day that Claire uh, goes through the stones. And I think that, well, it's springtime and the Scots definitely deserve... A spring-like day that is not gray and rainy. Okay, that's enough for the background. See? Um, I'm gonna move forward now and put in the green of the trees. Um, not the grass yet. I'm not gonna choose that color yet. I just want the trees. Let's see what I have there. <laughs> do like this tone the 278 I also like the 159 but since this is all one tree this is the same maybe for the bushes I'm gonna take the darker one I'm gonna take the one 59 it should be this one nope that's 158 159 there we go hooker's green yeah that's a very solid choice for a green in the trees and i'm just gonna Color those leaves here. I'm going to leave the uh, two seventy eight for those. Uh, bushes or other trees down here Can you see yeah <laughs> i always have to stop and see if i'm actually in frame with where i'm pointing at or something but i think being zoomed in and be able to see maybe a bit more detail is quite the nice thing i think makes it easier To see. Okay.
And now, oh, let's stay on this side first. And go with the little tiny baby tree down here. Oh, there's, no, that's a twig, forget it. Uh, then that's only that tree up here. Also want to have the cardstock behind my um, painting because I don't want to dent the next page when I go in with colored pencils that is maybe not with the lightest touch. Don't want to make any marks. So let's liquefy and have a bit of a green mass here on the trees. The page is curling a bit here from the water. I don't mind. I'm going to have all of the pieces that I'm doing in this book um, matted on cardstock in the end anyways. So I don't care if it curls. I'm also taking those pieces out of the book anyway. So I'm just not caring. <laughs> if you care, however, I would suggest not to use watercolors or any other wet medium in your coloring books. Now the one here, tiny little baby tree. I would not have gone with hooker screen, by the way, if uh, I would not have known this is spring. Would have gone with a way warmer, earthy tone, but I think it being spring, the hooker screen is perfect. Okay. These are the trees. Um, I think I don't like that this is not really that blue here, so I'm going in one once more. Adding blue pencil um, just to have a little bit more of a bluer tint back here. That's more like it. Uh, the next thing I'd say, why not have the bushes and the grass done. I want the bushes first. That was 278, one of my favorite colors. really like that pencil. 278 there we go and I'm putting in quite a bit of pigment so a medium touch because I really want the tree for example here to pop against that very dark bush in the background so I'm gonna have dark here Thank you. 
here. This is all grass, 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 and stone, grass, and stone, grass, and stone. So I want some more of that dark green just to bounce off and not just have it sit there in one spot. It would look pretty weird, I think. Also, I just realized I forgot a sky there. See? Good thing I still have that with me. That gray and that blue. So I'm going to... Because this is the horizon line there. Let's quickly liquefy that. There we go. And there we go. I um, think I'm going to... Well, to have the background look more harmonic and a bit more well balanced, uh, the thing would be to have the dark green, which is chrome oxide green, on another spot in the background, not only on this end side. So I'm going to put it here on this plant here. Just to have balance in my in my uh, painting. There we go. I could actually stay down here and liquefy this first. And this looks like a very juicy plant, so it could definitely be very dark green. There we go. Then I'm moving to the other side. I'm going to liquefy that pigment as well. Can you see? No, because you're not in frame. There we go. Might have to move you out one little click. But first. Let me liquefy all of that hookers green. No, it's not hookers, it's chrome oxide green, all of that. There we go. Now I'm going to move you out one click just to actually uh, be able to really be comfortable when painting and show you all the all the <laughs> uh, words um, all the page all the parts of the page that I'm coloring. So next up grass. It is springtime, so I'm thinking uh, 170, 168, 174. These colors are what I really like for spring grass. Maybe a little bit of 167. So I'm going to take 170, 167 and 168. Going to take the light one, 68, 170, and the other one was 167. Me quickly, 167. There we are. These three tones, which would be permanent green olive, um, earth green yellow ish, and may green. I think these are very nice tones for a summery grass. And I can have the very light tones here only in the back where I don't need a lot of different kinds of colors and shading and stuff. I just can put that down. And uh, the more I move towards the background, the more uh, the foreground, the more I can put in other shades as well. For so now I'm just gonna go with the lightest green and then go in with the second lightest. Just have some parts with a medium touch. Uh, have some parts a bit darker, a bit lighter. Something like this. 
Um, oh, there's more tree, is it? Yeah, it's actually more tree. So I'm going to take the very dark brown here. Color that. Quickly liquefy that. That's one thing that I find sometimes a bit, well, not annoying, but kind of challenging with coloring books when you don't design the painting or the scenery on your own uh, you, and you have so much going on on a page you really have to look okay where is everything how often do I have to repair things instead of actually being able to um, know where things are anyways so I'm going in with the lightest green. See, I'm not going all the way to the edges. Going in with the dark green there, so the mid-tone. Then I'm starting to have a little bit of the very dark green, just a bit here. And there, where there's overlap, and also maybe here, actually like that. Okay, now for the small ones, I'm taking the lightest tone, giving it a solid layer. And I'm going in with the darkest around it just to have a bit of pigment to pull upwards let's do that part before I color the rest and this section here so the rest of the road I mean just want this part to be liquefied first Okay, more May green on all of the grassy bits here in the road. To find them all, there's some. There's a wall, there's more. And more. That's that. And uh, now let's do the dark green first on these few bits just putting in a bit on the bottom and then I can color this part here give it a light coat with the may green again not going all over the thing but keeping a bit of space for the earthy green yellowish 
that's the light one going in with the next tone filling in the gaps And then going in with the dark, so here's a weird plant kind of that I'm just color color with the dark. And whenever one of these grassy bits sits in front of another, I'm gonna color the lower part of that one. See, that will make uh, for depth. And also for texture, of course, it will look less flat. There we go, and this one is here. And here. Need the lightest green once more. Just have that here. And now I can liquefy. I'm gonna start at the right hand side. with these little tiny grassy bits. Making sure that I don't pull the dark green uh, on these grass blades in front, cleaning my brush, going in from light to dark to the next. Again, cleaning my brush, going from light towards the dark, clean my brush. And this is how I keep the dark green at the lower part of these grass chunks, these clusters not move it up towards uh, the top of the grass blades too much. In here, between, again going from light to dark. And once more from light to dark, light to dark. And one last time, light dark. Now I can stay with the dark because it's just the dark green here with these three blades. There we go. Uh, time for a sip of cof uh, coffee. Mm -hmm. Sip of tea. I think the next thing that I want to do is the earth here, um, that wall here, and the um, the dirt road. So I'm going to need quite a bit of gray, uh, warm gray. So these tones here, and a few dark grays. So maybe, uh, maybe just one dark gray, the 181, which is actually Payne's gray, or it should be Payne's gray if I remember correctly. Yep, Payne's gray for the cold gray. And then I need a couple of the warm grays for the wall. The 274, I think, is nice. There we go, it's a good mid tone. Then uh, the one, uh, the two seventy-five. These are for the walls. The paint spray is also for the stones. Now I need uh, the light brown here. Which one was it? The one eighty. No, it's maybe a bit too yellow. Need a bit less of a yellow. Need the dirt. 
um, kind of like the 178 maybe. Yeah, the Nougat would be fine. Um, let's also take the uh, 175, which is the sepia, this tone here. Um, I'm going to take the raw umber, the 180, just a smidge uh, for maybe some, some parts here. And for the dirt here, I'm going to take the same brown, so the 175 mainly and probably a bit of the 178. So these are all the pencils that I need for the lower part and I'm going to start with the wall so I'm having Payne's gray uh, warm gray um, five and six so I'm starting with a lighter tone going over the whole thing here I'm taking the darker tone and put that towards the lower part of the wall. Also here on that uh, corner. And then every so often somewhere where there's dots and kind of like cracks in the Wow. Taking a bit of Payne's Gray, going over these lines here in between the stones just a bit, not too much, but a bit, and then going the same for the wall here. Lightest tone first. Next on the darker gray. Just going around here where the grass overlays and also in between the stones. And then going in with the Payne's Grey to have some of these dotted lines and squiggle lines here with a bit of a colder tone. Maybe, maybe down here have a bit more Payne's Grey, just a smidge. It is quite dark there. There we go. Um, I'm going to quickly liquefy the pigment, not to smudge anything, because you see the the wall there is uh, where I usually rest my hand, and I don't want to smudge anything. I'm going bit by bit, stone by stone here. I'm not liquefying the pigment on the whole wall in one go, really. I don't want to have the dark grays be pulled too much into the light grays. I want them to stay where I put them down. So I really want contrast between the lighter parts and the darker parts here of this wall. I can pull that darker warm gray up a bit and now for these parts the same thing applies I'm 
And on those stones here, I'm starting in the light section and then move towards the dark. Now I don't have to have a smooth way of liquefying my pigment here. I can actually uh, have some lines showing one of those squiggly um, lines here. I'm still having ovals and stuff but I think on this wall here I can leave a few lines that I would otherwise smooth out again because uh, it actually adds to the texture of the stone. So I'm not blending in things as smoothly as I would otherwise. Final stone here. Oops, there we go. Um, now I'm going to take care of the dirt part here. So I'm going in with um, the nougat, which is the lighter brown. Light touch, just pretty much base coating that uh, part here. And I'm going in with the sepia. And work with the lines that are given. Maybe a bit more of the sepia here behind that little tree. I think I used um, nougat on that. Time to liquefy. And now it's time for the road. Mm. I'm gonna put in some of the raw sienna first, so the yellow tone. I'm not taking care of the stones for now, and for now I'm just going over that. Uh, I will put in the paints gray later. We'll have to dry this page first and then go in with the paints gray. Now it's nougat.
now for the final bit I'm going to put in the sepia or is it yeah dark sepia and I'm gonna put that only under the horses because they cast a shadow You are here, so you cast a shadow here. This one casts a shadow here. And he casts a shadow here. Some few lines here. I think I can do the rest with the paints gray. Okay, I'm going to liquefy that first, then I'm going to dry it and then go in with a Payne's Gray for the stones.
Now I can go in with the Payne's Gray and just whoop, <laughs> add some pigment to the stones. Don't have to be super precise. Just put in pigment on the lower part. Because the lower section of the stone is, of course, darker as not a lot of light is going to hit it. Where there's more prominent stones, I'm of course going to be a bit more precise with the way I put down my pigment. But if it is just a cluster of stones, I'm also going to kind of like cluster color it, you know. Um, it's a bit darker here, so I'm giving it a paint's gray treaty treatment. I mean... So before I end the video, I'm going to liquefy the paint's gray, of course. Being quite squiggly with that. Just want to have the impression of, oh, there's shaded stones. I'm also making sure that my brush sto strokes stay parallel to the way the road goes uh, so that I don't screw up angle, perspective, all of that. I also don't have to be super precise. By the way, I liquefy the pigment. I just have to make sure that I liquefy it. Otherwise, I'm, like I said earlier, I'm prone to smudging. I'm going to put down a little more paint gray on this stone and also on that one here. Okay. Maybe a little more here. Oh, Keith. Oh, I forgot one. This one here. And the rest I could do with colored pencils. So um, that's actually one and a half hours of working time. Uh, by now I have a timer running next to me so that I know how long I can actually film something and not have it be 1500 hours long for you. I'm going to uh, let this dry now and uh, I'm going to end the video here. Next week I'm going to work on the soldiers, on the horses and I think if uh, I, if I'm, well, working as fast as I did to, in this video, I can finish the page next week. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching along. If you have any questions or comments, as per usual, leave them in the comment section below. Fill it with wonderful words. I would love that. And I'm going to see you next week to hopefully finish this particular page. And uh, like this video, give it a thumbs up if you 
well enjoyed it and if you're new to the channel and you like what you see here i would love for you to subscribe and hit that bell button so that you're notified whenever i release a new video uh, have a wonderful day folks also a wonderful week i'm gonna see you on the next video take good care bye bye have fun Whew.